Now, of course, the more cardio you do, the more you're going to be able to eat. But the problem with that is people do their cardio, and because the damn machine says, you've burnt 1,500 calories, they actually think it means 1,500 calories, and it doesn't. Time out of the board, a hole here. Thank you for joining me as always. And yes, we're going to answer uh, the question that is probably asked the most. I mean, it really, really is. You get it all the time. You can be walking down the road, going to the shopping market, which is not a place. It's called the grocery store or the supermarket. And you hear two people having a chat. They're going, man, bro, oh, man, should I do cardio? I don't want to kill my gains. I don't want to lose my muscle. I just want to be a jig dap dude. So what the hell do I do when it comes to the cross trainer, the treadmill, running, whatever the hell it may be. And look, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't even need to worry about it because when it comes comes to the human body, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, the most important muscle is your heart. If you haven't got a heart, and your heart isn't ticking over in the right way, it doesn't matter how big and jacked you are, you're going to run into trouble. So that is the main reason you should do cardio, right? Don't have to be smashing it every single day, although that would be good too, but making sure you have some sort of cardio in your life, whether you're trying to get big, whether you're trying to get small, whether you're trying to do nothing, is just a good way to be. Right, now we've drawn a line under that, we can move on. So a brand new study came out recently, and thank you to the person that sent me this on Instagram, cheap plug, at Simon316, come give me a follow and raise my ego, looking at the fact, okay, if you are doing aerobic training and strength training at the same time, are you going to see a downswing in one direction? Namely, that you're not going to get any muscles because you are too too busy sweating your ass off. And as it says right here, both athletes and recreational exercisers often perform relatively high volumes of aerobic and strength training simultaneously. However, the compatibility of these two distinct training modes remains unclear. Now we're going to go straight to the conclusion for reasons you will see in a minute, but it says concurrent aerobic and strength training does not compromise muscle hypertrophy and maximal strength development. However, explosive strength games may be attenuated, especially when aerobic and strength training are performed in the same session. So essentially, this comes down to a good piece of advice, which is if you are are going to do cardio and lifting weights on the same day try and separate them as much as possible or put your cardio after your weight session and don't put it in before but that just makes all the sense in the world you only have a certain amount of energy no matter how much food you eat or no matter how much pre-workout you stick down your gullet and if you use all of that when you go for your 45 minute run by the time it's time to lift weights you're going to be more tired than if you didn't do that so maybe you do your cardio first thing in the day maybe you do it last thing at night maybe you do it on rest days when you're not going to the gym now the reason i kind of flew through that study as quickly as I did because while it's good to hear these things because again you're always going to get these gym bro tips going no man you can't do cardio ultimately you need to figure it out for yourself and what I mean by that is everybody's body is going to react differently and that includes going to the gym and doing cardio so for example some people are going to need to do 45 minutes to an hour of cardio every single day for whatever reason it may be for the health things we talked about earlier or, or because they're trying to get shredded then somebody else will walk into the gym and they only need to do 30 minutes three times a a week and they can control the rest with their diet. Now, of course, the more cardio you do, the more you're going to be able to eat. But the problem with that is people do their cardio, and because the damn machine says, you've burnt 1,500 calories, they actually think it means 1,500 calories, and it doesn't. Burning 1,500 calories, even in a one-hour session, is incredibly hard to do. And I'm not going to start throwing numbers out here because I don't want to steer you in any kind of a direction, but do not believe that number. The only reason you use that number is because you're using the same machine every single day, and if the next day it says 1700 calories at least you know you did more than you did the day before but the biggest problem i always see is people think like oh i'm smashing the cardio now i'm going to add thousands upon thousands of extra calories that's not going to work and in fact really if you want to break down to it diet is far more important than cardio when it comes to trying to get lean and it comes to dropping fat it just does because unless you are absolutely pulverizing yourself you are not going to be burning the amounts that these flipping machines would like you to think you are and the other reason i think it's always important to take a study with a pinch of salt is I did some research and this came from the end of last year. I found an article that was called cardio exercise before weightlifting may increase muscle growth, which takes what I just said a few minutes ago and chucks it in the toilet. Because a new paper published in Scientific Reports, so it's got the word science in it, so we must believe it, offers practical guidance about how you might benefit structure a gym workout for maximal benefit. The study, which involved eight physically active men, found that 20 minutes of intense cycling right before an upper body weight routine alters the inner workings of muscles, priming them to change and grow more than with lifting alone. Now, this kind of does make sense because with cycling, if you are doing it super duper high intensity, you're still using your muscles, right? You still have to push things in order for them to happen. But listen to the amount of people they did it on. Eight physically active men. Eight, eight people. Do you know how many people are on the planet right now? Hey, Google, how many people are on planet Earth right now? She ignored me. That's not the point. It's billions. 
<laughs> it's billions. I'll put a voice in there and make it up. But it's actually, actually billions. And we have taken eight here. And sure, for those eight, they were able to get a benefit by this. And maybe it would work to a certain degree. I just think you're... Why are you going into the gym at that very minute? If you are trying to prioritize uh, muscle gain and muscle growth and everything like that, focus on the weights. And if you're trying to focus on losing fat, losing weight, maybe you want to put that one first. But still, you take my point. I've already talked about it. What you don't want to do is don't start using weight training to burn calories. Of course, you'll burn a little bit because you are being physically active, but it is negligible again when it comes to trying to get ripped up. If we do go back to the study quickly, it also says, which is important, muscle fatigue might also play a role since in most studies that pair cardio and resistance, volunteers exercise only their lower bodies, using their legs both for the endurance and the strength training. Tired from the endurance work, the thinking goes, their leg muscles could have become unable to respond ideally to resistance training because of course, they did an upper body workout. They didn't go and train their legs. They've already smashed them on a bike, whatever the hell they're using. So you've got to keep that in mind as well. But everything needs to sort of come together all in one. I get it. You want to be The Rock. You want to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. You want to be Thor. You want to be all of these people. But you kind of have to operate in the environment that you find yourself in. And I would imagine that all of them do cardio, right? Especially Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know that he is a big proponent of cardio these days because he gets it. Overall health is the most important thing. And when you find that balance, you can start to dial in everything else. Also want to point out in the last study that we talked about too, what they basically did is they went in there, they pedaled really hard for four minutes, they rested for three minutes, and then they repeated that sequence five times. So there is literally rest sets in there where they will be recuperating. And only then did they go on to do upper body weight machines. And yeah, they then got people to, go, to come in. They didn't do the cardio. And apparently they saw or, you know, slightly better results from the people. But it's probably because they were more warmed up, would be my guess. This, to me, just sounds like a really, really intense warm-up. And as we said in the video the other day, you absolutely should be warming up 10 to 15 minutes to the point that if you have to choose, take 10 to 15 minutes off your weightlifting and put it onto your warm-up because you have to prime your body. You've got to get in the right headspace, if nothing else. Do a little bit of cardio. Do a little bit of dynamic stretching. If you want to go crazy with the hit, I suppose you can do that. But again, I would advise against it. So always take studies with a pinch of salt but moreover than that figure out how you can incorporate cardio into your routine into your training days and your off training days without also screwing up you know your weightlifting part of it it's not going to take away your gains it's not going to steal away gains and let's say that i'm wrong because i could be wrong i don't know you i don't know your chemical makeup switch it up if you start doing 45 minutes every day and you look in the mirror and go man i'm losing muscle mass which i highly doubt but let's say you think that knock it down to 30 minutes knock it down to 20 minutes right and then Take stock in a few weeks and then do it again. But I promise you, over a long time, it's going to put you in a better, well, not only a better state of mind, but in a better state for the gym. Because if you have great cardiovascular health, your stamina is going to be better. So when you get to the gym, you're going to smash it even more. So you can spin it either way. This is what I think. But as always, make sure you watch a bunch of YouTubers. Make sure you read a bunch of studies. Make sure you go out there and educate yourself as much as possible. And then you can take all this knowledge. You can write it down in a big pad. Or you can put it on your phone. You can put it on your computer. And you can start to create your own plan, which is what bodybuilding and weightlifting is all about. It's all trial and error. We make mistakes, we try again, we get something right, we hold on to that, and then in a few years' time, we still don't like how we look, because that's how it works anyway. Now, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the bell, ding, ding, so you know other videos are going live. There is another video on the screen. Please do give it a click. Grillamind.com for us, Simon, if you're looking for some supplements to help you 1-2%, these are what I use. Uh, there's a link in the description down there if you want to click right through. Same with Greg Doucette's Power 13 Cookbook. I'm in that, or some of my recipes are in that as we try and give you a diet that you'll actually enjoy so you don't cheat on it. Don't like that word, but you know what I'm talking about. Patreon.com for us, Simon316. On Twitter, Instagram, at Simon316. SimonMill.BigCartel.com. I'm on Cameo as well if you would like a shout out. And honestly, spam the comments. Maybe you think I'm full of it. That's fine. You can tell me. Or maybe you too have incorporated cardio recently and realized that actually it does help you out a little bit. I probably should have said this in the main crutch of the video, but for the people that hang around, you get something special. I do fasted cardio every single day because I feel like it sets me up. It really, really does. I get up. Sometimes I have a coffee. Sometimes I don't have a coffee. And I do it when I'm done. I'm like, man, I've achieved something already. And that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy in my tum tum. And as ever, I really should have mentioned this. Doesn't matter if you do fasted. Doesn't matter if you do non-fasted. Just do whatever works for you and do whatever fits into your day. Remember, you have to balance all of this with life. Otherwise, you're going to be screwed.